Good morning, Cross Church family. Uh, this is Brandon Bowen back again for an elder devotional. And uh, this week, I got to tell you, the month of May has been a real doozy for us. And so, as always, I pray that you are blessed and in good health because you're going to need both of them for the ramblings of an exhausted man, myself. Uh, like I said, the month of May has been a real doozy. And as many of you may know, uh, the passing of my mom the day before Mother's Day was bookended by a hospital stay and now illness in our house. So we've kind of had a run of it for the entire month of May. But um, keying on my mom and uh, the amazing woman of faith that she was, I'm going to talk a little bit today about fearlessness. And my mom, <laughs> speaking of fearlessness, uh, she embraced life to the absolute full, fullest. Uh, you know, she was a big city girl from San Jose, California, which even in, uh, you know, 1967, the year she graduated was almost 900,000 people already. And here she goes to Hawaii and she meets a man from a little town in Idaho that was about 350 people. So it was tremendous difference between the two. But being the fearless woman she was, she absolutely embraced country life. Uh, you wouldn't know that she's a big city girl at all. She loved going out, uh, picking berries, doing all kinds of things outdoors. And indeed, uh, it's one of those stories I'm going to bring up. I was probably, oh, I don't know, five or six. So mom wasn't even 30 years old yet. And we lived in a small town in Montana called Superior. It's about 50 miles north of Missoula, where my dad was the geologist at a silver mine. And so being out in the boondocks or the toolies as we as we used to like to call it, uh, we had the opportunity to go pick berries and hike and, you know, sightsee, whatever. It was really cool. And I remember this one time, like I said, I was five or six. She and I, we went up the road from our house. We couldn't have been five, six miles up the road, and I mean the road, it was a gravel road, it was on Flat Creek, was the name of the creek beside the house, and we got out of the car, and we're standing there, and we're picking berries, I think it was gooseberries of all things, and while we're doing so, we might have been there 15, 20 minutes maybe, we hear this tremendous sound in the brush off to our left, something coming down the hillside and it was really loud and it made not just loud footsteps but loud noises vocally as it came and mom was pretty sure it was a bear and even in that moment she was just cool as a cucumber <laughs> she said brandon i think it's time we need to go uh i don't know what that is it's time to go and we packed up our stuff we weren't in a we weren't like panicked or anything i don't remember her ever being panicked about it that's what was funny is that clearly she had to have been because here's her little boy with her and we jumped back in the jeep and we went back to the house like nothing ever happened but she was always kind of fearless in that way uh, when it came to the outdoors just absolutely loved it with maybe one exception and that's anytime my dad was prospecting he'd have his head hanging out of the jeep you know with one hand on the steering wheel while he's looking at the ground Meanwhile, on the right side of the car, on the passenger side, there's like a thousand foot precipice down off of a, off of a high mountain ridge somewhere. And, and mom's freaking out because he's not really looking through the road. He's got his head hanging out the window. He's prospecting. He's looking for float material. You know, the, the sign of a, of a vein outcropping on the surface. And, uh, <laughs> it was the only time I ever really saw fear from her when we were out in the boonies. But, you know, even as time went on, and we weren't able to spend as much time out, out of doors like that. She, uh, she still maintained her fearlessness. Uh, even with a bout of cancer at the age of 42, she was almost 43, uh, had a brain tumor. It was operable. It was benign, thankfully, but it was still a tremendous brain trauma. And indeed, we, I kind of wonder myself if that didn't have something to do with the Parkinson's that would that she would develop later and that would eventually take her but uh 
even throughout her cancer scare, which she literally feared for her life, she absolutely leaned on the Lord because there was really nobody else there for her. She was kind of trapped in her own mind. She was in this place where she couldn't speak. She couldn't think right, but she could always pray in the spirit. And it brought her great comfort in her most desperate moment. And so I remember throughout the years, and this is before her bout with cancer and even after, one of her favorite passages is something that maybe uh, Daniel would call a, a t-shirt or a coffee mug pa uh, passage, but I don't care. I have the camera today. And I'm going to read from 2 Timothy 1, verses 6 through 12 in the New King, King James Version. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you through the laying on of my hands. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but share with me in the sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began, but has now been revealed by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, to which I was appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles. For this reason, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Now, she liked to use this uh this particular piece of, of scripture um, a lot, uh, but she also had a full understanding of it. And what I mean by that is to her, it didn't just speak of physical fear, you know, uh, the fear for one's life or dangerous situations or things like that. But she also knew that it was about, and, and this is what, and this is what Paul is actually talking to Timothy about. Timothy was a very timid man, and he's reminding him that he has the Holy Spirit in him, and that Holy Spirit will embolden him as he goes forward after Paul is uh, is uh, is killed. Because in this letter here, uh, he knows very well that the time is near that that he will be uh, he'll be executed. And he wanted to leave this encouragement with Timothy, saying, hey, you know, this isn't just about physical fear and anxiety and things like that. It's about having the boldness to step forward in faith when prompted by the Holy Spirit. And that is something I saw my mother do on more than one occasion. Whether uh, she felt prompted to speak to a total stranger uh, she did that on a number of occasions where she felt the Lord was telling her to talk to them about a, whatever that certain subject was. Uh, she'd be given the uh, the gift of knowledge where she would know something and she would approach that person. Of course, they'd be absolutely amazed. It was just a total example of God working through her. But, you know, she would also... Uh, take other promptings. I remember another time when I was in the fifth grade, and yes, you're going to think that by the time someone's in the fifth grade, they should know how to swim. I did not swim very well, and I was at a school swim party at the University of Idaho, and I, long story short, I almost drowned. And at that exact moment, my mother felt the prompting of the Holy Spirit to pray for me. She didn't know why. She didn't know what was going on. And when I came home and told her, the look on her face was just, it was unreal. It was like it was like nothing I'd ever seen before, heard before, understood before. Because she had that insight that God had given her to say, you need to go hit your knees about your son. And throughout her life, you know, she listened to the prompting of the Holy Spirit and used it as a weapon, as a force against evil. Um... Uh, I won't get too in the weeds on that, but I do know that it is an absolute weapon that if 
we can bury the spirit deep within us, the spirit of the Lord, and not just listen to it, but act upon what it tells us we need to do. Mountains can be moved in the name of the Lord. And so just a very, very simple question I have for all of us today. What fears are holding us back? What things do we need to give to the Lord? And I'm not just talking about physical fears. I'm afraid of dying. I'm afraid of this. I'm afraid of heights. I'm, I'm talking about ordinary, everyday anxieties and those things where the Holy Spirit is saying, step forth in boldness. I've got your back. I'm here with you. And I will comfort you. I will give you the words to speak. I will give you the actions to take. So very briefly this morning, I'm going to ask, what can we conquer through him? Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, I just praise you so much. Uh, first and foremost for my mother, who was an absolutely light of faith in my life, who showed me so many things, open gateways, just made me realize that there is a spiritual world out there uh, and not just religion, because she did not just have religion. No, she had faith. And I believe that there is a huge difference. And I thank you, Lord, for that difference and for sending her to have me, to teach me those same lessons, those same lessons. And I just praise you and I just thank you for her. And I praise you and I thank you, Lord, for all those listening today. And I ask that you would bless them, that you would keep them in your hands, that you would continue to guide and teach us as we dig in the word and as we seek you out, as we pray earnestly. And I just, uh, I just know that your will will be done in our lives, Lord, if we seek you first in your spirit. And I ask all this and thank you so much in your son's precious name. Amen. Have a great day.